grub steak? Yep. It is. All right, so the spiel. We have yak, beef, buffalo, elk. At Grub Steak in Estes Park, Colorado, tourists drop in daily to try out new options, and their favorite meal is yak. If you've never had yak before, I highly recommend it. Yeah. Um, it's a really clean flavor, lean meat. It tastes more like beef than anything. It looks and cooks like beef, too. Every year it's grown more and more. More than a third of all the burgers we sell are yak. Go in the kitchen and cut them cut. That's the cowboy yak. Thank you. Yak and beef may look the same on the dinner plate, but not on the ranch. Oh, Ryan Holland runs 7-H Yak Ranch in Calhan, Colorado. He's raising 12 yak and says they're good for the environment. Yak are smaller than cattle, so they need less food and less water, and they produce less waste. These animals are healthy. These animals are good. There are so many benefits to having these animals. It just only makes sense. It only makes sense. And yak are considered a leaner meat or a more healthy option than beef products. Holland says the cattle industry should look at incorporating more yak and maybe someday yak will be a mega industry too. I think with you know information out there with uh, training and education, I think it could easily be the very same thing. You know, we have it for cattle, so why couldn't we have it for this? For starters, there aren't very many yak. According to the International Yak Association, there are only 2,100 registered yak in the United States. Compare that to the 2.1 million cattle slaughtered in just one month in the United States. Those are not the kind of numbers of yak that will feed the world. The estimate is that we'll need to produce 100% more food by 2050. Keith Belk says that if America is going to feed the world, it's going to be with the big three, pork, beef, and chicken. These are established industries made for mass consumption. So where do we find that increase we need by 2050? And 70% of that will have to be based on additional technology. That's what researchers are working on at CSU. At the university's research ranch, Jesse French is a livestock manager, and he's breeding cattle that need less feed. Feed efficiency is, is, is really looking at the input side of things. So they might be able to grow to the exact same weight, but one did it with 20% less feed in the university's test kitchen. So this isn't retail ready as it is. Undergrads work with professors to reduce waste at the butcher floor. So we cut that and essentially have two halves. And over in the laboratory, CSU meat safety students are infecting meat with salmonella and then testing new methods to kill off the disease. It's an important aspect of the meat supply. In the last decade, U.S. producers had to destroy about 40 million pounds of recalled meat every year. All of these efficiencies in feeding, butchering, and reducing food waste aim to reach one goal. How do we feed more people at a lower cost and have a smaller impact on the environment all at the same time? It's that environmental impact that has some people thinking about eating less meat or even eliminating meat from their diet altogether. Some food developers are trying to give those people an option. The challenge? To make a meatless alternative for those who like the taste of the real thing. Devin Brunts is the lead researcher in charge of developing Harmony Valley brand meat substitutes. We worked with a lot of different ingredients, a lot of different soy products, different ingredients that would add bite to it when you cooked it up to kind of really give you that feel of a cooked beef. Brunts hopes his products can influence the market, but he won't be able to rely on vegetarians. Just 5% of Americans identified as vegetarian in a 2012 Gallup survey, and that number had hardly changed since the late 90s. Bruns hopes to attract carnivores to his product, not to convert them to vegetarians, but to give them an alternative. I think there is a huge trend of people just trying to eat healthier, so be it maybe they're not going to switch over 100%, maybe 20% of the time, people who now eat all meat are going to start eating different vegetarian products. So what's the future? Probably more alternatives like soy or yak. But when it comes to feeding the world, researchers say the U.S. will be serving up beef, pork, and poultry. If we're going to improve efficiency, increase production of food that not only will address North American needs, but it'll also address global needs, a big chunk of it's going to have to come from the Midwest of the United States. Ranchers, researchers, and food producers are finding ways to meet that global need. And the real transformation might not happen in the United States, but maybe in those developing nations as today's American plate goes global. Tastes like a hamburger. <laughs>